This video will discuss the build of the motor subassembly. The motor subassembly has several components to it. Uh, here we see the motor in the center. The motor fits into a bracket, and this bracket will mount to our swing arm. Uh, there's an adjustment on the motor subassembly that allows us to, to adjust the tension on our drive chain. And this subassembly will mount to the swing arm with four brackets. Once it's installed into the brackets, the motor will also have a drive sprocket that we'll put on the shaft. A couple components to this are the keyway and the key on the shaft to hold the drive sprocket. And some set screws that hold the drive sprocket into place on the motor shaft. You'll notice a safety element to this video in that the motor is resting on two pieces of wood so that it can't roll around on our workbench. This is important. The motor's heavy. You don't want it moving as you work on it. We will install the bracket, the motor subassembly bracket, with the motor in a vertical position. And we're still going to use the wood blocks as safety supports as we do this. The first step is to put the spacers on the top of the motor so that the bracket, when it fits to the face of the motor, is flush with its connections all the way across. So there are four spacers. The top of the motor is the point on the motor where the terminals are located and the labels S1, S2, A1, and A2. Notice that we're putting the bracket on the motor with the adjustment bolt towards the bottom of the motor. So the top of the motor is facing away from us towards our technician as he in installs the bolts to the motor subassembly. We're just going to put these through and hand tighten them as we get to this point, we don't need to tighten anything permanently yet at this point. You'll notice that these bolts fit through slots, and you can see the frame move a little bit there. The slots allow the motor to be adjusted when it's in the vehicle to allow us to tension the chain with that adjusting bolt. So here we can see everything's connected but not fastened tightly yet at this point. We're just going to snug up our bolts by hand and then rotating around, get them a little bit tighter with the wrench. Um, the motor will likely need to be adjusted so that the chain has the proper tension, so we don't want to lock everything firmly down into place yet at this point. We are going to move the subassembly around a little bit, so we don't want the motor loose and sloppy in there. Just tighten the bolts enough so that it won't move around as we uh, manipulate the, the motor subassembly for some other assembly steps. We need the motor subassembly in this position in order to put the sprocket on the shaft of the motor. Uh, we're going to install the sprocket with the shaft side out, facing outwards. And the motor sprocket goes over the shaft with the key in place. It's easier to do it that way. And then we're going to adjust the set screws, tighten them down so that the shaft and the sprocket are connected together. And we'll take a look at this from another angle in a minute, but the shaft on the sprocket is facing outwards towards the end of the motor shaft. Here you can see it a little bit better. That extension on the sprocket is facing outwards towards the end of the motor shaft. When we put the subassembly onto the vehicle, it will mount to the swing arm with these brackets at the four points that we discussed earlier. These just bolt around the swing arm and connect the whole subassembly to the swing arm. And then we're going to make some adjustments when we put this subassembly onto the swing arm. Uh, we'll discuss those in another video. But the motor will move laterally side to side in order to line up the, the sprocket on the motor with the drive sprocket on the wheel. And then we'll put the chain on. So this completes our build of the motor subassembly before it goes into the vehicle.